Shalom family, Shalom Lak Mash Paka. That means peace, it is well, family. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the flesh versus the spirit. Flesh versus the spirit. Um, we're going to start off in Ephesians 6 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to start off with some verses and kind of tie it together to do the study. But uh, I'm doing these teachings to basically help my people understand that you're not in this alone, but certain things that we've learned to accept and some things that we've been we've been taught to just I guess throw under the rug, you know, it's it's time to get out of that stage. We we have to do a conviction of ourselves, you know, because it's a lot of doctrine and a lot of customs and it's a lot of tradition that we as Americans just take and you know they know our history. We don't know our history. We are the only race that does not have a nation. You know, they was to tell everybody to, hey, y'all just go back to y'all, y'all nation, and y'all go back to y'all land. And we'll be the only ones that's wondering, like lost, like, oh, where we gonna go? You know, where they telling us to go back to our land, but where where is that? You know, and for years, you know, we just, I, I know myself, I've kind of just not read the Bible like I was supposed to. I thought always, I, you know, going to church, you know, was keeping me holy or keeping me blessed. But you got to pick that Bible up. You do. You got to pick that Bible up. If you don't, then you will be misled. You know, you will accept things that are supposed to be normal and they not. You know, a lot of these things that we accept is what's keeping us in bondage. So we'll start at Ephesians 6. And 10 through 8, 10 through 18, I'm sorry. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Allah, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I mean, that's, that's deep. It says we wrestle against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness. That's Spiritual wickedness is, is things that we're being taught in our holy assemblies. That's true. You know, I, I could just list a couple of them. For one, Lord's Supper. You know, that's nowhere in the Bible that we're supposed to do that. Every, most churches have that every first Sunday. And the Messiah or the Mashiach, at that time, he was literally having Passover. But they kind of misconstrue things and tell you, hey, it was the Lord's Supper. So that's that's another doctrine that we've been taught to be true or a doctrine that we talk been taught to to exist, but it's 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 just wickedness. It just says spiritual wickedness in high places. I go on, it says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of Allah, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. You gotta have his arm on so that you will know that look, this wickedness. I can't I can't rock with this. If the church teaching you this, no, 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 I can't rock with this. It said right here, I can't, no, I ain't supposed to be rocking with this. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of Allah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the basura of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
and take the helmet of Yahshua or salvation and the sword of the Rawak or the spirit, which is the word of Allah or the most high. Praying always, I'm going to say that again, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Rawak or the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the Kodashim or the holy man. All right, let's move to uh, Galatians. We'll go to Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Galatians 5, and we'll read 16 through 26. It says, This I say then, walk in the Rawak, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Rawak, and the Rawak against the flesh. So it says the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Rawak or spirit, ye are not under the law. So it's saying if you're, if you're being led by the spirit, you don't really have to be under the law because you will know like the Most High said, we was going to circumcise our hearts and put it on our minds. So therefore, you won't forget it. How can you do away with the law if he's saying that he's going to put it on our hearts and on our minds? So that's telling you right there that he doesn't want us to forget it. He doesn't, he's not telling us to do away with it. He's telling us he's putting it in our flesh. So we're going to know these things. Now it says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft. Don't we see all that? We see a lot of people saying they manifesting things in their life. Nah, you can't, you can't do that. Only thing you manifesting in your life is wickedness. That's all you're doing. When you uplift yourself over the most high, that's just straight wickedness. Um, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revealings and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the king of Allah or the most high. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law put in place. And they that are Yahawashai's Hamashayaks have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So that means you have to crucify your flesh. Your, your old self has to die. You can't just say, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, and not crucify your flesh. Because if you don't crucify your flesh, that's what you that's what's controlling your mind and your actions. So you feel like you can do what you want to do. All right, let's go on. Uh, we'll go to Romans, Romans 8, Romans 8, uh, 6 through 14. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Allah, for it is not subject to the Torah of Allah, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Allah. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Rawak or the spirit. If so, be that the Rawak Allah dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Rawak Mashayak, he is not his. And if Mashayak be in you, the body is dead. Because of sin. But the Rawak is life because of righteousness. So the spirit gives you life. You have to crucify your body or your old self to get life. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai, or some may say Jesus Christ, like I said, we use Hebrew names, Yahweh Shai from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up the Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. 
Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So you have to walk in spirit, not in your body. For as many as are led by the rock, the rawak Allah Hayyim, they are the sons of Allah Hayyim or the Most High. Let's go to, uh, let's stay in Romans and let's go to uh, the 13th chapter and we'll do 11 through 14. It reads, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It's time to wake up, y'all. It's time to wake up. For now is our Yahshua or salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and seductiveness, not in strife and envying. Man, that's, that's black people all day. That's, that's our people all day. It's telling us not to do it. But put ye on the Adonai, Yahweh Shai, Hamai Shayak, and make not provision for the flesh. So don't save your flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. All right, let's move on to um, uh, 12, chapter 12. We'll go back to chapter 12 and we'll we, 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 we'll read, <laughs> excuse me, a little tongue twisted. We'll read uh, one through two. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Allah, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Allah, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Allah. Don't let nobody tell you you can't be perfect. Don't even don't even fix your, your mouth to even say you can't be perfect. Well, I'm not perfect. Yeah, you're not perfect because you're not following the will of the Father. Now, like I said, it's time to wake up, y'all. It's time to wake up. Let's move on to uh, 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians, and we're gonna make all this tie in. Somebody gonna learn something today. Somebody gonna learn some today. Second Corinthians 10 and 3 through 5. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Allah to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Allah and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Mashiach. So like I said, that's, that's, a, that's a scripture for manifestation. If you know somebody that's talking about it, hey, you can, you can win it in your life. You can win it in your life. Nah, nah. You, you, only thing you wouldn't in your life, only blessing you receiving is from Satan. And one thing about it, you can't get blessings from Satan. So if you want to serve Satan and continue to serve Satan, and and because I did a, I did a teaching on the uh, the spiritual house slave. You know, being a spiritual house slave means that you don't feel like you're in slavery, so you you're not seeking freedom. You know what I'm saying? So. If you feel like you're a spiritual house slave and or you feel like you're not in bondage in America, then, you know, these scriptures are not for you. You know, these are for people that know that they are in captivity in America or that wonder why black people are the scum of the earth. You know, it's we all through these scriptures. He gave us his teachings in the Old Testament. It says he taught no other nation this stuff but us. But us, he chose us as his people, black people, Hebrew people. I'm talking to you. Yes, he chose us as a people. 
That's why we are the scum of the earth because we still disobedient. We still following the custom and traditions of America. We still living amongst this world. We accept everything they give us. But the truth, they're not going to tell us the truth, but guess what? They know we'll, we'll, we'll snap out of it. Because once they reveal to us the truth, we'll snap out of it. We'll be a nation. We'll come together. You'll start seeing successful people. We'll start bringing our communities back together. You know, but it starts in these scriptures. Everybody got to get back in these scriptures the right way. Let's move on to uh, Isaiah 26 and 3. I hope y'all follow me with y'all Bibles. Don't just listen to me, man. Follow, follow the Bibles. Follow the scriptures. Isaiah 26. Oh, Isaiah 26. And we'll do uh, verse 3. It says, You will guard him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the making of the man. And you can find um, the making of the man or the body in Genesis 2 and 7. You can find the soul in Genesis 2 and 7. And let's, let's just go to it. Let's go to it. Genesis 2 and 7. It says, And Yahweh Allah formed the man of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. So he he gave us his personal breath to give us life from the dust of the ground. Now we all know what color dust is. You know what I'm saying? We all know what color mud is. We all know what color dirt is. You know, that's just self-explanatory. It says he breathed. Let's read again. And Yahweh Allah informed the man of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. So therefore, you have the body. And now he has a soul. All right. Now, the body did not have life until the soul was given. Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 17 and 11. I may be moving a little fast. But I want y'all to keep up with me. We got a lot to go over. Uh. We're going to Leviticus, Leviticus 17 and 11, Old Testament. For the soul of the flesh is in the blood. That's deep because we know it takes blood for our bodies to keep working. So it says, for the soul of the flesh is in the blood. He and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood of him that makes an atonement in the soul. So in that scripture, they was giving sacrifices. Um, uh, the high priest would make an atonement for the Israelite sins. But like I said, that key first part says, for the soul of the flesh is in the blood. All right. Now, the spirit, which we can go to uh, Genesis one, let's go to Genesis one and we'll do 26 through 27. It says, and Allah Hayyam said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Allah Hayyam created man in his own image. In the image of Allah Hayyam created he, him. Male and female created them. All right. Now we can go to John 4 and 24, the gospel of John. Um, chapter 4, and we'll read 24. It says, Allah is that Rawak or the most high is that spirit and they that worship him must worship him in Rawak or spirit and in truth. That's John 4 and 24. Let's move on to uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. 
It says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Rawat Allah Allah So we're saying the natural, the natural man, the ordinary man, the one who has not crucified his body to receive the Mashiach has not the things of the spirit of Allah or the most high for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually disearned. Yeah, y'all might want to look at that on your own time, but that's that's a deep that's a deep scripture. It says, but the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of the most high, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually disearned. All right. Now let's let's um uh, I'm going to touch on some things as far as the battle for the soul or the life. Okay. We know man consists of body, soul, and spirit. Okay. The soul is where the life is. The body and spirit is fighting for your life. I'm going to say that again. We know man consists of body soul and spirit now the soul is where the life is all right but the body and spirit is fighting for your life to 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 influence your soul the influence of the soul all right every day the two flesh and spirit fight wars against each other for this purpose Whichever wins is what controls you out of the two forces. I say that again. It says every day the two flesh and spirit fight wars against each other for this purpose. Whichever wins is what controls you of the two forces. Let's go to um, Galatians 5 and 7, 5, 17 through 25. I just read that, but it's going to kind of connect to what I just said. Galatians 5, 17 through 25. It says, for the, flood, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And it says, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, manifest which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, Lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Allah. So we must speak from the spirit to the soul to the body, not vice versa. Let's, I'm going to say that again. It says, we must speak from the spirit to the soul, to the body, not vice versa. The spirit has to be our initiator. So you have to be led. That's, it goes back. Your old self, you can't be led by your flesh, your emotions. You have to be led by the spirit. All right, moving on. It says, we will yield to the spirit and buffet the body or yield to the body and suppress the spirit. You see what I'm saying? That's deep. It says, we will yield to the spirit. So we'll yield. We won't listen to the spirit. We'll listen to our bodies or our minds. And it says, or we will yield to the body and suppress the spirit. So that's actually what we're doing. We're yielding to the to the spirit and letting our bodies or our minds take control over everything or what we do our, of our actions. All right. I'm going to do a little comparison uh, as far as the body and the flesh versus the spirit. OK, the body and the flesh fights against the spirit and the spirit fights against the flesh. 
the body and the flesh has knowledge that comes from what's seen, felt, and heard, and the spirit has revelation knowledge that comes from Yah, or the Most High. Yah is his Hebrew name, Yahweh, or Yahuwah, that's modern. Yahweh is ancient, Yahuwah is modern, okay? The body and the flesh depends on appetite, and the spirit depends on Yah's spirit to live. The body and the flesh brings death. Let's go to Romans 8 and 6. That, that verifies that. It says the body and flesh brings death. Okay, let's go to Romans 8 and 6. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. All right. So the spirit brings life. The body and the flesh is an enemy. Oh, excuse me. Is an enemy against the law or Yah. And the spirit is subject to law. We'll read that again. The, the body and flesh is an enemy against the law or Yah or his teachings. And the spirit is subject to law. Let's read Romans 8 and 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Allah, for it is not subject to the Torah or law of Allah, neither indeed can be. All right, let's move on. Let's move to your soul. All right. Your soul consists of mind, will, and emotions. Your soul consists of mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is taken over once all three come into one accord. The mind is reasoning and logic. So if I meditate on something long enough, my mind will begin to reason or desire on how to obtain it. I read that again. The mind is reasoning and logic. So if I meditate on something long enough, my mind will begin to reason or desire on how to obtain it. Let's go to James. Let's go to James 1, uh, 13 through 14. And it reads, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. For the most high cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Your mind. All right. Now let's move on to will. Your will is after I meditate on what I'm desiring, my will comes into agreement with what I'm desiring. All right, let's move on to the emotions. Once my will agrees, then I will begin to feel like doing what I'm desiring. You see how your mind, your will, and your emotions, they tie into each other on how you make decisions and choices in life. But that's not how we should be led. We should be led by the spirit. We should be led by the spirit. That's what gets us, our mind, our will, and our emotion. That's what keeps us sinning. That's what makes us do what we want to do. Uh, well, you know, y'all know my heart. The most high know my heart. You know, he know I ain't perfect. No, he's telling you to be perfect through the spirit. So you have to let the, the spirit take over your flesh, your body, your mind, your will, your emotions. You got to eliminate all that and be led by the spirit. All right. Your soul has the, has the ability to bring you whatever you meditate on. Once all three come into agreement 
your mind, your will, and your emotions, then my soul will give me what I desire. That's why we must think on things above. All right, let's go to Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, and we'll uh, read verse 1 through 2. It says, If ye then be risen with Mashiach, seek those things which are above, where Mashiach sits on the right hand of Allah or the Most High. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's a powerful, that's a powerful set of verses there. I read that again. If ye then be risen with Mashayak, seek those things which are above, where Mashayak sits on the right hand of Allah. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Come on, people, we gotta wake up. We got to be, we got to wake up. We gotta wake out of wake up out of this oppression that we living in. The Most High wants to lead us. He wants us. It's, it's more than just accepting uh, the Mashiach or, as y'all know, Jesus Christ. You know, that's just his. That's an American name or American uh, culture. That's what that's how we what we've been taught. His name is. And that's that's not correct. But they tell us to just, hey, believe, accept Jesus Christ, accept Jesus Christ. And all your sin is just done away with. Yeah, it may be done away with, but what about you going on sinning? You you keep on constantly sinning. You keep doing sin. You know, think about your child. Yeah, you will forgive your child for the, the wrong that he's doing, but if he keep doing the same thing over and over, you like, wait a minute now. I didn't whoop him one time. Matter of fact, I didn't whoop him three times for the same thing. You know, it's you got to it, it got to somewhere it got to be fixed, you know. You got to be able to fix things. You know, you got to be able to say, hey, look, I'm walking in spirit. I ain't walking with my mind, my will, and my emotions. You see what I'm saying? I'm walk I'm being led by the spirit. All right, we'll move on. It says, the soul's job is to try to figure out how, how to obtain what it's desiring, flesh or spirit. What are you desiring? It says, the spirit part of man is designed to stay connected to Yah or the Most High. The body and flesh is designed to keep us connected in tune to this natural world. All right. Let me read that again. It says, the spirit part of man is designed to stay connected to Yah. But the body and the flesh is designed to keep us connected in tune to this natural world. Hasatan or Satan attempts to keep us tuned into the natural realm while we lose focus and battles in the spiritual realm. That's deep. It says Hasatan attempts to keep us in tune with this world or the natural realm. While we lose focus and battles in the spiritual realm, okay? Let's think about that. We all know, or maybe y'all don't know, it's a spiritual realm outside of our bodies. When you go to sleep, your body, the flesh is the only thing that rests. Now, your spirit wonders, and that's, that's just facts. That's why you have dreams. That's why you have visions. Because that's the spiritual realm of things. Now, I just read it says Satan wants us to stay in the natural realm because he doesn't want us to master the spiritual realm. Because if we're being if we're mastering the spiritual realm, you're able to cipher the evil that he's putting upon us. You see what I'm saying? That's why you have to be in tune. You have to be led by the spirit. And you will know which spirit you're being led by because the, if you if you walking in the commandments, the statutes, the instructions of the Most High, 
crucifying your body and your flesh, meaning putting all your feelings and your emotions to the side, what you've been taught, getting back in these scriptures and learning what he has taught us from the past, then you will be in, in tune with the spiritual realm. When you have these dreams, you'll be able to remember these dreams. You'll be able to cipher out if, hey, if Satan is visiting me or if the most high is visiting me. You see what I'm saying? All right. It says, as long as we stay tuned into this realm by not killing or crucifying the body, we will never be able to win the battle that matters. Hasatan will let you think you're winning because in the natural, you are successful. You got a nice car. You got a nice job. You know what I'm saying? You got food in your refrigerator. You got this big old turkey on the table for Thanksgiving. You putting up this evil tree in your house on Christmas saying it's, it's, it's the Mashiach's birthday. It is nowhere in scripture saying that the Mashiach's birthday is December 25th. You see what I'm saying? You're being led by what you've been taught, the body and flesh. Satan has you in this natural realm. You're in tune with the what? The world. I read that again. It says, Hasatan will let you think you're winning because in the natural, you are successful, but you are poor in the spirit realm. Most of our warfare, we can conquer if we master the body. We don't move by our flesh, by our emotions. Western society or science has taught us to ignore the spiritual and focus on the natural. Science tells us to see and believe. All right, let's pause there. It says science tells us to see and believe. Excuse me. Okay. Now, that sounds like science. If we're not seeing it, then it's not true. If we can't feel it, it's not true. That's what science is telling you. But to me, that sounds like that's the opposite of faith. Because faith is... The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not what? Seen. So that's what science, that's why I said science and Satan, they work together. They work together. You can't be led by science. Now, don't get me wrong. Science, it's, it's, it's been proven that science has, has done a lot of works for people. But you can't let science outrule your faith. Or your instructions from the most high. Um, you can read that in Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1 is the definition of faith. The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. Let's go to uh, Romans, Romans 1 and 20. Romans 1 and 20. It says, for from the creation of the world, the invisible things of the most high are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and divinity, so that they are without excuse. See, most of our bodies are on autopilot. I say that again. Most of our bodies are on autopilot. It does what we think is good. You know, we got to get our bodies off this autopilot now. We got to be led by the spirit. You got to be led by the spirit. We can't adapt to sin. We just, we can't do it. I'm trying to get my people right because I, I, I see how we're being oppressed and I see not just physically, but mentally. We have been oppressed mentally, mentally. We've learned to accept so much. It's like we chase the other nations. We look up to the other nations. We want to be like the other nations. 
When I say the other nations, I mean the, the people that are living amongst us that are not black, that are successful. I look at everybody else. Their communities are developed. But black people, we are the scum of the earth. I don't believe that. I don't want to believe that, but that's, that's what we see. And if you're watching this video, you see it too. You see how we are being oppressed still. But the, if you get back in your scriptures and understand these scriptures, a lot of things that we can do to change our oppression are in these scriptures. Don't let nobody tell you, the oh, that's, that's just the past. The Old Testament is the past. The Israelites, that was the past. No, the Israelites are your ancestors. The Israelites are who you come from. So that's who you need to be studying and seeing how they messed up and the most high was putting them in captivity. You see why you in captivity now? Because we messing up. We constantly messing up. We constantly messing up. We constantly messing up. We falling into the doctrines. We falling into these church. We, we love our church more than our Bible. We love our church more than our Bible. And if you do the, the research on that word church, matter of fact, let me look it up for you. I'm, I'm going to look it up. If, if, you got, if you got your phone with you, look up the word church, the etymology. Go to an etymology dictionary. Etymology dictionary. And we'll look up that word church, what that actually means. The origin of church. And it, I think you can go to. Uh, I think it's etymology online. Just type in church. All right. And I'm going to show you all my screen. It says old English. Cirrusy. Cirque. Or place of assembly set aside for Christian worship. All right. Now, why would they? Why would they put those two words in front? Cirrusy or cirque? Why would they put those two words in front? Okay. Let's let's type in those two words. Cirque. And the word cirque. The, 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 the definition of Cirque is a beautiful enchantress of the Isle of A who transformed into swine or pork those who drank from her cup. And it, it gives a little bit more um, history about it. It says from Latin, uh, Greek. So we see how the Greeks... And the Latins have used crafty counsel to think that the church is a holy place. But as you can see, this is a place of worship for idol gods. Cirque, the word cirque. So, I mean, that's why I'm asking my people to... Before you say something is right, just like with holidays, before you say something is right, do the research or the, the background information on, on that actual meaning. Because a lot of those things is basically self-explanatory. Now, like I said, I'm going to do a, a lesson on the holidays, but we got some holidays coming up like Thanksgiving and uh Christmas and Thanksgiving is just self-explanatory. I don't see why somebody would want to sit down and and give thanks to being slaughtered. You know, people say, hey, it's, it's family time, but your family wouldn't be off if America hadn't made it a holiday or uh, 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 um, you off from work. You know, you wouldn't have family time if everybody had to go back to work. If, if everybody had to go to work on that day, it wouldn't be people. It wouldn't be people sitting around cooking turkeys and 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 and, and, and talking amongst each other. If you had to go to work, see, they make holidays. They they make you to 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 be off work 
so that you can celebrate these evil things. But you have to do research on, on the days, on the origins of the holidays, just like Christmas. It's so much evil in Christmas and that Christmas tree. Don't you know um, the Vikings, way before they even start saying Jesus Christ, the Vikings put up trees and they put bulbs on the trees to represent the black people's heads that they didn't cut off in their day. So why would somebody even want to put up a Christmas tree in their house? It's so many scriptures in the Bible saying, don't put up Christmas trees. But yet and still, we do it. We accept it. You know, we accept it. But yeah, I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna do a teaching on all the, on on majority of the holidays and majority of them days is just full of evil. And like I said, that goes back to us accepting these days and worshiping these days and and having our kids and putting in putting it, putting that information in our kids like they right to do. That's why we being oppressed to this day because the Most High is looking at us and saying, "Look, look at those silly look at my look at my silly children." They still won't put down the paganistic things that they're learning amongst their captors. Let me move on, huh? Because I'm like, so I'm gonna do a teaching on that. That's gonna be heat. Y'all need to catch that one. Y'all definitely need to catch that one. Um, I'm gonna do something on dreams real quick. I'm gonna read to you something about dreams, and then I close it out. Um, if you ever have dreams, and um, and these things are happening in your dreams. I'm going to give you a little, little information, a little background information about it. It says uh, receiving items from people. If you're receiving items from people in your dreams, it's some form of initiation like demonic. Somebody is somebody demonic is trying to put you down with some type of demonic uh, exercise. If you're eating or if somebody's feeding you in a dream, that means witchcraft. Somebody's feeding you evil. Somebody's feeding you evil if somebody's feeding you in your dream. Now, if you're falling, falling and walking in your dream, and then all of a sudden you just wake up and it's like your heart drop. You're like, <gasps> you wake up. That means your spirit is coming back into your natural, your natural realm. All right. Um, if you're talking with some someone and you're not able to see their face, like it's like you're talking, you're talking to somebody. But every time you're saying something to them, it's like they turning their head. That actually means someone close to you is putting witchcraft on you. So that's why I said we I did this teaching so we could be more in touch with the spiritual realm. You see what I'm saying? The spiritual realm, because when we go to sleep, a lot of people have dreams and a lot of people, these things are happening to them. We need to know these things. All right. If you're being chased, shot, or stabbed, that means you're under, de under demonic attack. Uh, if you're being pregnant, if you're pregnant in your dream, that means a spirit you're having a spirit child from a demon. Uh, snakes, witchcraft, that's an ancient spirit. Uh, rats, it, that means poverty. Uh, old addresses. That's a that's a spirit. It's the spirit of setback, and that that's deep because I've had several dreams of not just old addresses where I stay, but old people that maybe I went to school with or I've known in the past, and they all of a sudden just appear in my dream, and I'm doing something, and that that means you're having a spirit setback. It's something that you're holding on to that's not letting you receive the spirit. You see what I'm saying? So if you see like old people that you know you don't talk to, but you know them, but you're like, why are these folks in my dream? That means you're having a setback. So the spirit is not, he's not, he's not living amongst you. He can't, he can't hop in you. The most high, his spirit cannot get in you because you holding on to old things. All right. Cobwebs means rejection. That's the spirit of rejection. But uh, I, I said I wasn't going to be that long today. I almost hit an hour. But uh, I hope these teachings are helping y'all. I'm doing it so I can help my people. You know, I ain't been woke all my life. But now that I am awakening, 
I want my people to awake like me. You know, I want my people to to be led by the most high and not led by Hasatan. You know, it's 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 like I, I see so much lackadaisicalness with my brothers and sisters and we, we, we say we want to get right with the most high, but what are you giving the most high to get right? You see what I'm saying? You got to put down certain things to receive his blessings, you know? And just because you receive and bless, you got a new job or you got a new car, that don't mean it came from him. Hasatan blesses too. He told the, the, the Mashaya, he said, look, I give you all these, everything around you. I give you all the nations. He said, you will never want for nothing if you, if you just come and serve me. That's what Hasatan told the Mashaya. So just because you got a new job or, or you think you, you, you got a dream from the most high, don't, it, it ain't necessarily from the most high. Hasatan can be blessing you too, you know? So I just want us to be woke and I'm, 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 I'm praying for everybody. And if you know me and I'm 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 standing in vocal with you, you know I'm praying for you. You know I'm praying for you. You know. So um I hope everybody's being touched. Shalom to everybody. Peace and blessings.